Okay. Hospital. All right. So let's uh, let's get back. Now it's talking about we're talking about wholesale prices and retail prices. Yes. One of the best places to go for us is organic price tractor mm -hmm. because we grow everything organically. We pull the weeds by hand. We're dealing with the weeds by you know not using any fertilizer. We're mm -hmm. not using pesticides. So we're following organic practices. We use organic seeds for most part, right? Mm -hmm. So our, our overhead is similar to an organic farm. You know, when people ask, why is organic food so much more expensive than, um, than regular produce? Well, what do you think? Well, because I cried uh, on those. <laughs> They're so hard. Well, because you it's can a lot use more hours. They yeah. Yeah. Labor. More hours, exactly. More hours. It's your labor, right? Because yeah. if you can't use the pesticides and the herbicides, you're dealing with this stuff, you know, pretty hand by hand, right? Yeah. Dealing with these things, it's more labor. And uh, there are some costs to certification. You know, you pay every year to be certified, but that's not a big cost, right? So, but it is a cost that you have to consider, right? Yeah. Yeah. So for, for example, like if I looked at this tracker, you see it's, it's broken down a region right across uh, Canada. See, pretty cool, eh? It's called, I'm yeah. sorry, where Organic is Price name? Tracker. Organic Price Tracker. Yeah, and so I go, here's all, all British Columbia. I can go to Vancouver Island, right? Mm -hmm. So I can click, Vancouver Island is a, a region, and I can type in, what do I want to type in here? Beets. Let's talk about beets. I love beets. Okay, so we're going to search for beets. And so what it does, it lay, lays down, okay, we've got beets, greens, we got baby beets, we got gold beets, we got red beets, and we have specialty beets. Okay, interesting, eh? So let's say, let's say our market is baby beets. So we click on that, and it gives you a market price. The market price is what you would sell at the farmer's market. So $4.55 per pound. We're selling our beets presently at four dollars per pound. Okay? So we could actually sell a little bit more and the market would bear that price. Wholesale is still four dollars per pound, so that's pretty good. There's something interesting that's happening with the market here because uh, the value is, is actually quite good for wholesale. There must be a shortage of beets. That's what my thinking is. <coughs> all right, so I don't want to dwell on this too long, but here's another example on carrots, right? You got the market price and you got the whole wholesale price. Right? Gee, beets are way better yeah. to grow, aren't they? Interesting, yeah. You can look at what uh, what, what prices, uh, which ones are making you the most money. Okay. Hmm. So back to our review. Spreadsheet. So we're talking about our marketing streams. We're looking at farmers' markets, and we're going to look at beets. How much we could possibly make in beets. So, just another thing with the farmer's market, let's say your goal is to make about $13,000, $1,000, or $10,000 in a year, right? That's your goal. And in the farmer's market, this is kind of a good roadmap that you could use. I could grow this many beets, this many carrots, this much lettuce, this many potatoes, so that much radish, some turnips, some broccolini, and um, See, that's uh, eight, seven, eight, seven. Two, seven two, products. No, one, two, three, four, seven. five, six. Seven. Six, seven. All right. Um, is that enough to do a farmer's market? I don't know. Like, if, you, if everything looks really good and you got abundance uh, of each of these products, maybe it would be, right? A CSA wouldn't work. Your, your customers would hate you in the next week, right? You need more <laughs> variety in the CSA. Um, you know, farmers markets, what draws people to the, the table? It's abundance, right? Yeah. If they see lots of stuff and lots of variety, they'll come to your booth. All right, so we looked at the marketing plan. And uh, so this marketing plan is an Excel, and it's a, you know, kind of a complicated spreadsheet. Again, it's all broken down in market streams. We have the farmers market, the CSA, restaurants, online and the Tofino Yukula Guild. So this morning we're focusing on farmers markets and we're focusing on beets, okay? And so whatever we learn here we can apply to all the other crops or the other streams, right? Um, so farmers market is direct sale and we know that if we, if we had a plan like this we could potentially make about that much money. So it's a week, 25 pounds yeah. of beets. 
that's quite a lot of beats too, right? So um, it takes about, uh, ooh, I don't know, five, five good sized beats to make a pound. So 25 times five, what's that? That's 125, ooh. right? 125 beats. <laughs> the price per pound is $4 a pound, and which is a reasonable price for organically grown beets where we're not certified. So price per pound, four dollars, we're right in the line there. So the total that we could possibly make of beets just for the farmers markets is about two thousand dollars, just for the beets. Okay? So total pounds would be about five hundred pounds, okay? And the yield per row is a hundred feet. Yield okay, so yield per row, so that is hundred hundred beats. That's a hundred beats per row. And oh, remember well. we just said we needed like 50, no, 125, 125. So we would need like uh, one, one and a quarter rows. And, to, and how many rows to, in a bed? Uh, hmm? How many rows in a bed? Four, three. Three <laughs> rows in a bed. Three, yeah. See, so that's interesting to get your brain so, from row to bed. Yeah, so 300, good. 300, um, so it'll be 300 beats per bed. Okay, that's okay. It's a good way to think, is think in the, use the bed as a unit of measure. Like how much do you make per bed? So yeah. you got uh, $1,200, $1,200, yeah. right? So each bed's going to yield me about 300 pounds, right? So one, eight, one beat weighs one pound? No, it's about four or five to a, uh, okay. a, bu a bundle or a uh, pound. Okay. Okay. So you look at the market, everything's bundled, right? That's right. I, I, it drives me nuts when things are all loose and hold the bulk because it, uh, everybody has to have Wait. their product weighed. And now I like, I don't mind making an exception for that little old lady comes here and I says, I can't eat all those beets, right? And I say, okay, I'll split it up for you. Make an exception for that person and then that'll make that, that's customer service, you know, mm -hmm. and they'll appreciate that. But honestly, keep everything in bundles, you know, because it's much more faster like to have it all piled up. Someone just grabs a bunch of beets, gives you the money, and you're done, right? Whereas if you're having to sit there and weigh and look for prices and all this stuff, mm -hmm. you're, you're wasting a lot of time. Yeah. To, because if you went to Parksville or to, yeah, um, if you ended up in Comox Valley, that market, this is what you have to do. Different beets. If you're there, you know, twiddling around, weighing stuff, taking forever, that customer will never come back. Look at the look at the different um, prices here for a hundred foot bed, right? Look at some of these numbers here. Who, where is two hundred here? Who's that? Okay, let's take a look at their uh, potatoes. Uh, <laughs> Dang potatoes. Okay, we right. talked about this last week. What is uh, what are potatoes to us? The loss leader. They're a the loss the leader. leader. Everybody wants potatoes, and the, but the price is so dirt cheap. Because there's so many potatoes, it's you know, and we can't compete against an industrial system with us digging our potatoes with a pitchfork where they have big machines and harvest everything like a whole field in an hour, where it takes us an hour to harvest a few plants, right? Look at that, interesting, eh? So it's a lost leader, it does track people, everybody wants potatoes, but uh, we're not making any money off it, also. It takes up a huge amount of space. Look at the number of beds. Ten beds. Holy. For those potatoes, right? All right. So continuing on, we got, now we got the dollars per bed. Okay. We're looking at the different prices here. Uh, it looks like uh, which ones are the best ones here? Carrots. Carrots. Look at that, eh? And uh, there's the. A curry carrot. No. A curry turnips are looking pretty oh, good. Curry turnips are yeah, good. right up there, and um, you know, so it's it's kind of like where is the break here? Where do you say this is not worth it? On seeds per bed. Okay, so I figured out how many seeds we need per bed for boro beets. So 720 seeds, mm -hmm. and so total seeds for the two beds is 1,200, right? You, you're looking at these numbers going, well, two times 720 is not 1,200. That's because I rounded this number, okay? Because last time we were looking at this, 
We can't have 1.65 beds. I'm going to round it up to the highest number, right? So that's why it's 2. But that number is actually 1.65. So that gives you a different number. I'm sorry. But that's, what, that's why this number is different. So 1,200. Then I add 30% on top of that amount for poor germination or just dying off of the product. So in other words, I'm growing 30% more than I need, that I actually need to grow, because 30% is going to die. It's not going to germinate. So if you didn't do that, you'd be 30% short, right? <laughs> of whatever you're trying to grow. Now, granted, some plants have better germination than others, right? You look at the package, it'll tell you what the germination rates are, and uh, maybe you can, you know, cut back a bit, because that's, you know, that could be another tray, right? Another tray in the greenhouse. Maybe you're cramped for space or whatever. Okay. So now we've got how much we have to grow. We have to figure out how we're going to get there, right? So then we go to our crop plan. And the crop plan, you should have that open. Excel sheet, right? Crop plan. Crop plan. Yeah. Uh, the first tab on there is crop availability. I put that there so that you get kind of an idea of what, when your stuff's going to be available. Okay. So uh, let's find beets on here. There's beets. Okay. So beets are generally available July to September. So that's the growing season, right? That's uh, when it's going to grow, right? Now, beets will actually store well in the ground here, okay? Did you know that? Did you know that you could keep your beets in the ground? You told us that. What do you mean? We could just store them for the Just winter. store them in the ground there for... Um, they just stop growing, they just kind of sit there and... They stop yeah. growing, exactly, Sandy. So like in October, it's September, right? Right now, it's still a little bit of sunlight. It's getting cooler, right? Things slowing down. And I go, oh gosh, you know, grow, grow, you guys. And then it gets smoky and it cuts out our light. Production goes down, right? It's cloudy out. Production goes down. <laughs> it's cold. It's cut. Production goes down. Oh, we go up, right? But it's not. So what we got to do? What would you do? Is you want to increase your production? You could create create an environment that the plant was growing. Oh, put a hoop house on it. Yeah, right. We could put tunnels over. We could put low tunnels over all our crops. Okay. And that would uh, give it a little bit more warmth, right? Because the sun will come up, hopefully, and heat up the soil and keep it warm, right? And improve our crop production. But with putting crop covers on, we'll cut down the light. So it's a kind of a mix, mix thing, bag of worms, right? You want to, I like that analogy. Okay, this is really cool, right? West Coast Seeds has this really cool calendar. And this one here is the fall winter harvest planting chart. Why I'm showing you this is that's where we're at right now. And if we look at beets, we're seeing in August, um, according to their thing here, we could direct seed, right? Direct sow for fall and winter harvest, right? Is this and online that you're looking at this? You see these little, here's a legend right here. So little dots mean you start indoors. The little line with a, a, a snowflake on it means direct sow for fall and winter harvest. And then we have a line with the sunlight, which means direct sow for spring and summer harvest. Okay? And then three little stars, like that asterisk, means transplant. And then a little curve like this means cover. And this one means you can harvest, right? So looking at beets, we see that the latest that we can seed is in August, direct seed, okay? Um, we've got beets here in August, we direct seed for a winter harvest, okay? So those, those beets we put in, we're going to harvest it through the winter. And, and, but here in September, we can still direct seed. Interesting. <laughs> Anyways, September, you can put direct seed, but then you have to put a cover over it, right? So that means it's protected. 
So we're going to put low tunnels, or you do it in a greenhouse. You do it in a, a, like a caterpillar tunnel, right? Or the greenhouse. You can grow some beets throughout the winter. But it needs to be protected, right? Uh, Elliot Coleman has a whole book on winter harvest. Excellent. But here, look at this. Beets are in the ground, under little tunnels, and all the way to March. So would it be uh, a good idea then for us to, um, uh, when the tomatoes and cucumbers and eggplant are done for the season, right. um, to pull the covers back and put in a bunch of beets or whatever it is that has that symbol there, and let it sit in those two hoop houses that we made over winter. Yeah. But yeah. it doesn't say plant <coughs> when you got a plant in... Yeah, so as long as we did it September. Uh, so that's direct seeding. Right? Yeah. Direct seeding. Yeah. Okay, so we could start, and we are. This is the plan. Okay. Right? We are going to all those tunnels and the greenhouse. We're going to pull all the tarps back. And now we've got some pretty decent soil. We've kind of amended the soil. We've been, you know, added lots of organic matter to the soil and uh, yeah we'll we'll cut off those those tomatoes and we'll leave the roots in the ground right oh really yeah and we'll we'll start a bunch of seedlings in the greenhouse and transplant them in there we could actually do paper pot carrots right and if we timed it really correctly we could just run down that whole length of that greenhouse put like uh, multiple rows of carrots and now all the carrots we would harvest, let's see, where's carrots? Here's carbon, carrots, right? Like, these are in June, August, July, August. So the ones that are in the ground now will be able to harvest throughout the whole winter, right? This is coastal British Columbia. We are in a very mild climate zone, right? So it's possible for us to do this. Mm -hmm. If you can't do this in Alberta or Saskatchewan, freeze it solid. But you can overwinter carrots. So I, what I could do is I could put the carrots in the greenhouse. Uh, as, soon, as soon as they get about this tall, and it gets cold and the lights gets poor, they're going to stop growing. But they're still alive, right? Because carrots store really well in the soil, cool temperatures. Best place to put it, right? So we'll leave the carrots. We'll cover it with remade, right? And in the springtime, those carrots will start growing again. And so in uh, probably... April, okay, even at the tail of this, they'll start growing. And by, you know, April or May, you're going to have nice sized carrots. Before everybody else, yeah. nobody else has carrots, yeah. and you'll be able to charge premium price for it. People line up for your carrots. And like uh, Irvine was saying, is that it was amazing how people would just line up in December for something that was green, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I was growing lettuce in, a, in a, uh, the tunnel at uh, CMHA in December. So I had lettuce and Asian greens, bok choy, stuff like that. All grows really well in a greenhouse undercover. It's like putting a little greenhouse inside of a greenhouse. Just doing that will we'll, uh, actually you know, raise the temperature a couple of degrees. And, uh, but light is always the thing. It's still slow to grow. Right, mm -hmm. it, you know the thing is the point here is you want to get it to that height, a certain size, before it gets cold. Like you got a head of lettuce like that, it's not going to grow anymore, but it stores. You can store it, and uh, and sell it when the price is at.